Our box model from the previous module helped us to see how we can reduce the concentration of indoor air pollutants. Let's go into the different strategies in more detail. When it comes to improving IAQ, we really have three options. We can remove the source, we can reduce the source, and we can remediate the air. Together, these are known as the three R's, remove, reduce, and remediate. The first R is remove and means getting rid of objects or activities that release pollutants into our indoor air. When we have the opportunity to remove a source, we absolutely should. It is by far the most effective strategy because it means the pollutants are no longer getting into the air in the first place. Some examples of removing indoor air sources include becoming a scent-free facility by asking occupants not to wear perfume or cologne, and removing plug-in or spray air fresheners and essential oils. We can walk around the building and look for potential sources like mold growth or asbestos damage and properly remove them or manage them so pollutants like mold spores and asbestos are no longer getting into the air. Similarly, it is important to periodically service and clean the HVAC system to remove any mold growth, dust and debris buildup, and other sources of pollutants in our ventilation air. The garbage and trash cans can often release pollutants. Think of the smell. So we want to make sure we're regular, regularly removing this source by emptying trash cans into outdoor dumpsters. And since people can be a source of respiratory germs and viruses, removal could look like asking sick people to stay home or requiring a negative COVID-19 test in order to enter a building. The first start, remove, is such a powerful strategy that it's a great idea to regularly, regularly walk around, look and smell for potential sources that we can get rid of to improve our indoor air quality. Sometimes though, we can't remove a source. In this case, the second R can be helpful, reduce. Just like it sounds, our goal is to reduce the amount of pollutants that come from the necessary objects and activities in our buildings. For example, when we're cleaning, we can be mindful to use only what's needed, not excessive amounts of products. Remembering that VOCs are a type of gas pollutant that typically has a smell, we can switch to products that are unscented or labeled low VOC when purchasing things like cleaning supplies, building materials, and paints. This means these items only release a low amount of pollutants into the air. For things like new furniture that release chemicals in a process called off-gassing, we might let them air out outside for a bit before bringing them inside, waiting until the amount of chemicals they release is reduced. We also might want to look at what outdoor air is getting inside and see if we can reduce sources from that ventilation air. For example, we can find out where the building air intake vents are and put up signs that say no smoking and no idling to reduce the amounts of smoke and vehicle emissions that get into the air we're then bringing inside our building. For people, a great way to reduce the amount of respiratory germs and viruses getting into the air is to have them wear well-fitting masks. Removing and reducing are great ways to decrease the amount of pollutants in our indoor air. But quite often, to have good indoor air quality, we need the third R, remediation. Remediation is a fancy way of saying that we're going to improve the air quality. For example, when we clean with chemical products, even if they're low VOC, they'll still release some chemicals into the air. Turning on exhaust fans can help actively remove indoor air pollutants by flushing out the dirty air. More generally, ventilation, where we bring in the outside air to replace the dirty indoor air, is a key remediation strategy that works for all pollutants as long as the outdoor air is clean. Ventilation includes natural strategies like opening windows to allow increased airflow, and mechanical strategies like running HVAC systems. Generally, more outdoor airflow means lower indoor pollution concentrations. Again, we need to be mindful of any pollution in the outdoor air, such as wildfire smoke, but if the outside air is clean, then bringing that fresh air indoors is a great way to improve IAQ. Ventilation is the main strategy used for removing indoor pollutants that are gases. For removing particulate matter, including those that contain virus and bacteria, we can also use filtration. With filtration, we send air through filters and the small fibers of the filters trap particles and remove them from the air so that the air coming out the other side of the filter is cleaner. A great way to increase remediation of our indoor air is to upgrade the HVAC filters. We can also place portable air cleaners directly inside a room to remove even more particles, which can be beneficial during high pollution events like wildfires or when we're particularly concerned about disease transmission, such as flu and cold season. Ventilation and filtration are such important strategies for improving indoor air quality that we'll discuss them in both the second and third module series too. Now you know the three R's, remove sources, reduce sources, and remediate the air. Together, the three R's represent our key strategies for improving indoor air quality and can help us remember what to do as we assess buildings for opportunities to improve IAQ.